Sharpsburg. The longest time he spent with any one group of bodies, six negatives exposed on all these bodies over here. Bob Klasky tonight is going to argue that this wasn't taken until the 20th. Either way, it's interesting that Frazzanito said that uh, that uh, Gardner would have spent upwards of about an hour with this group of bodies. That's a pretty long time when you have a battlefield full of, you know, things to photograph. Uh, Klasky, Bob Klasky did his shadow research and came up with one hour is how long it took to record these six photos. So that's pretty interesting. They don't agree on the day, but they both agree on about how long it took, um, which is pretty cool. The, the most famous of the photos, uh, probably not the first one that was recorded, at least according to Bob Kalaski, would be this one that is the most famous, taken from about where that wayside sign is, looking off in this direction, showing this fence, showing the fence behind it. And if you, by the way, do have a 3D book with you, share it with the people next to you. Turn to page 20. I'll see anybody with their glasses on. <laughs> there you go, Janice. Good, good. Um, yeah, you can see the modern in 3D, by the way, while we're out here. We see in 3D. And then you can use the glasses to look in the book to see in 3D. So what you're looking at is a group of bodies splayed out here. All but certainly, Louisianians from Stark's or Taliaferro's or Tolliver's division, Stark's Brigade of Louisianians, that took position here. The dead are on both sides of the fence. There's actually one on this side of the fence visible in one of the photos. Gardner took this photo as well as four others of the bodies to the north here. And then one photo looking over back toward the Maryland monuments over here, a rarely seen photo, although it's at the Library of Congress, uh, the quality, you have to play with the contrast to make it work, maybe that's why, but a really telling photo that shows the bloody pasture between the cornfield and the Dunker Church. Um, you can really get into this stuff when you start looking at these bodies, and in other words, this group here um, is, a, uh, is a group of soldiers that doesn't appear in the other pictures. The five cover these soldiers, this photo covers other soldiers down here. Okay, looking across to what is now Lil Wilson's property over there. Okay, uh, and I would suggest people talk about the cornfield a lot. And I don't know what the other Antietam experts here would suggest, but man, the, the pasture south of the cornfield, from what I've read, is every bit as bloody or bloodier oh, than the bloody is. cornfield. There is serious that's fighting good. going on here in numerous actions throughout the morning of September 17th. Tim? Oh, I just wanted to mention that uh, for those of you who are fans of Rufus Dolls, the, uh, you know, Colonel of the 6th Wisconsin, you know, eventually, who writes uh, Service with the Sixth, in uh, one of his um, writings, um, I think in the Maoist papers, he wrote in September of 1889, the piles of dead on the Sharpsburg and Hagerstown Turnpike surpassed anything on any other battlefield of my observation. The angle of death at Spotsylvania and the Cold Harbor slaughter pen and the Fredericksburg field where Sumner attacked were all mentally compared by me when I saw them with this horrid lane at Antietam. My feeling was that the Antietam Turnpike surpassed all in manifest evidence of slaughter. In climbing these two post and rail fences, they lined the turnpike. Hundreds of men were killed. They climbed these fences as the shortest cut to the woods, though feared through fear of retreating before our fire over the open fields. In climbing the fences, they made themselves an easy mark for our men. Some of our troops of Sumner's Corps climbed these fences under the same circumstances on their retreat from the woods around the Dunker Church. So here's an 1889 description of what he thought about this area, perhaps having seen these photographs and having been here at that time. So it kind of uh, reinforced the, uh, the idea of this uh, uh, turnpike. Tim, I'm going to, can I say something? One of the most interesting discoveries really recently here from uh, by John Richter um, in studying the original glass plate negatives of one of the Hagerstown Pike pictures. You can imagine the scene when you were there. If you approach the body, a, a burst of flies would certainly come off of it. Well, John, in studying the, the exposure, which was probably anywhere between four and seven, maybe eight seconds, has found a fly, the, the profile of a fly on one of the bodies. So, which, which negative is it, John? Is that one with the guys in the ravine, just a solo? It's the one that oh. I'll show tomorrow not night that, no. that I have a hand-tinted version by Gardner of. 